You've seen the clips, your favorite streamers getting millions and billions of chips per hand. It's cool. It is damn cool. But how exactly do they do it? The short version is this. Get a steel card, put a red seal on it, and clone it as many times as you can. And if this were TikTok, I'd end the reel right there and leave you to it. But since we're on YouTube, I'm going to take you on a deep dive through everything you need to know about the strategy, how it works, how to build it in-game, and what to do if you can't. You may not get the full combo every time, but if you're lucky, you'll get to wield the red death too. 1. How it works. So let me walk you through the math. A steel card by itself gives you 1.5 times molt. Cool. Let's put a red seal on it. Since the effect triggers twice, you might think the molt will double to 3, but since they scale multiplicatively, instead we get 1.5 times 1.5 equals 2.25 times molt. The lower number makes me sad, but watch what happens next. Let's say you use a death card on it. Now we have two red steel cards, and we're at 1.5 to the fourth power equals about 5 times molt. Not bad, but let's keep going. Now let's say you apply Cryptid. We now have 4 red steel cards in hand, meaning that we can trigger the 1.5 times molt 8 times total. And if we raise 1.5 to the 8th power, we get about 25.6 times molt. And now, we're a little bit more excited. To put that into perspective, if we have high card level 4, we are now looking at 102.5 molt from cards in hand alone before counting any jokers. Throw in one blackboard, and we've beaten white stick already. Now let's get a little bit crazy. Say you find an early DNA, and you clone your red steel cards until you can get 7 of them in every hand. 7 red steel cards is 14 triggers, so our multiplier becomes 1.5 to the 14th power equals 292 molt. Now, we don't even need blackboard to win. But oh no, our hand can only fit 8 cards. How can we possibly get any more triggers? Not to worry, I have a solution. You might be wondering why I picked kings as the sample card. That's because there's a joker called Baron, and Baron says every king in hand gives you another 1.5 times molt. So, if you have 7 red steel cards, and all of them are kings and you have baron you now have 28 triggers total if you thought it was going to be 21 remember that red seal causes baron to trigger twice per king if you raise 1.5 to the 28th power you get 85,222 molts in one hand congratulations you have now one shot the anti-8 boss on gold stake finally let's add one more joker to the mix just one more it's called mime and the text on mime reads retrigger all card held in hand abilities so before each red steel card gave us four triggers and now each one gives us 8. If we have 7 red steel kings in hand, and we have baron, and we have mine, we now have 56 triggers total. And if we raise 1.5 to the 56th power, we get 7,262,907,400 molt from one card. Congratulations, you have now broken Balatro. Okay, so I looked at the footage more carefully, and it seems like Mime is only causing 2 more triggers instead of 4, which means we get 6 triggers per card instead of 8, which means we raise 1.5 to the 42nd power instead, which is about 24 million. Sorry about that. It's still a big number. 2. How to do it. So now we know how the combo works. The real question is, how do we actually get it? It's mostly luck based. Obviously, you need to get Baron and Mime and probably DNA and just kind of hope that that happens to you. But you can set up your deck to be ready for those cards to come in and still be playable otherwise. The first step, obviously, is if you see Chariot, put it on Kings whenever possible. Sometimes you won't see any Kings, and that's okay. Put it on something else instead. But Kings are the best because you have that Baron synergy that you could potentially get. I'm also usually happy to put Chariot on Queens because if you get a Strength card, later on that will level up the queen into the king and then it'll work with baron as well. Once you have a steel king, any cloning effects obviously you want to prioritize using it on that. DNA, death, cryptid, the usual suspects. If you can put the red seal on the steel king before you start cloning it, that's ideal of course, but I think it's still worth it to clone the steel king even if you don't see the red seal because red seals are really rare and it's actually totally possible to play the strategy without using the red seal. So assuming you were lucky enough to get a whole bunch of steel cards, let's now talk about sources of molt that synergy with steel cards. So any joker that gives you raw plus molt actually does not synergize because the plus molt triggers after the steel card resolves. So ideally you want to look for two kinds of jokers, ones that say when scored and ones that say in hand, because those will generally trigger before a steel card. You do have to pay attention to the activation order though. For example, if you have shoot the moon, then you need to move your queens before the kings in order to make sure that the steel cards multiply the shoot the moon molt. Levels obviously are also great if you can get them. Those will all benefit from 
all the steel cards in your hand, so you can lean a little bit more towards planet cards and also jokers like burnt joker. There's a joker that just says, the more steel cards you have, the more scaling multi you get. Just get it if you see it. You didn't need me to tell you that, but do it anyway. Another interesting thing to note that you may not have thought about, pairs and high cards end up being stronger if you're going for a steel card deck. And the reasoning behind that is that the more steel cards you have in hand, the less space you have in your hand to look for stuff like flushes and straights and whatever. So if you see the pair or high card planet cards, you should generally favor taking those if you're going for the strategy. And also, you should look for jokers that are what I call hand neutral quote unquote meaning that you will get the full value out of them regardless of what type of hand you play. Good examples of this include Abstract Joker and Ride the Bus. I mentioned it before, but Burn Joker is actually one of the best jokers you can get to enable this strategy, because you can discard high card every single hand, level up your high card a whole bunch, and that leveled up scaling is going to apply to the steel cards as well. Another favorite joker of mine for this is Trading Card, because if you have Trading Card and Burn Joker, you can discard one card that's always going to be high card every single hand, destroy it from your deck, which increases the density of steel cards, and then also level up high card, which scales with the steel cards as well. Card removal in general is just something that I like in deck builder games, but it's especially important if you're going for steel cards, because the more cards you remove that are not steel cards, obviously the easier it is to draw into your steel cards consistently. And consistency is probably one of the biggest downfalls of a deck like this, where you need to draw certain cards if you're going to win. Finally, there's a couple of sideline notes that I just want to make. First of all, stone cards are actually surprisingly good in this deck, because if you're going to be playing high card a lot anyway, you might as well get a whole lot of bonus chips to go along with it. The main downside of stone cards is that you can't play 5 card hands with them, but we're not going to play 5 card hands anyway because we're doing steel card, so it's a wash. The second thing is that red kings actually have anti-synergy with blackboard, and blackboard is such a strong joker that you kind of want to play around it even if you don't see it, because in the event you do see it, it kind of just wins the run for you a lot of the time. So if for whatever reason you have the option of either getting a lot of black kings or red kings, get the black kings, just in case you see blackboard. Alright, that's the actual information lesson of the video done. I'm just gonna close out the video by showing you a whole bunch of clips of me doing really well with the Red Death, just for fun, just cause I can, uh, and I assume that's what you're here for too. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you learned something. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Balotra videos, and catch you later. Happy hunting, I hope you get the Red Death soon. Bye! Bro, I don't know, it was just a cool run. Yeah. Oh, it's the Serpent, I see. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So this is close to maximum. I'm missing a 1.5 over here. Okay, so I'm at an E16 right now. That's the one. Sell. Buy. Okay, so we're at an E20 right now. Ooh. It's this is the true red death. This is the ultimate ultimate build. Unless I increase my hand size. If I can inc increase my hand size, that does make things better. All right. E23. Oh shit. This I I f I missed that the E's did not match up. And so this number getting bigger does not mean anything at all. So we're just done. Alright, that's fine. That's totally fine. We reached anti-17. We've hit a nice personal best of E23. I'm I'm pleased. I'm pleased. The only thing that I could possibly have gone better is if I got it on stream. But I still recorded it, and so that's fine.